Welcome to Scratch Coding. With Scratch, you can create your own stories, puzzles, games, and whatever else you want to create. You're in control of everything in the programs that you write. Today, we're going to create something like this. It's Ultimate Pong. There's power-ups and tricks. You're going to love creating this so you can play with your friends. First, we're going to create a regular Pong game. Get rid of Scratch and draw a background with no outline. We need one rectangle. That's the whole playing court. Then we need a slightly different color on each side. And just for looks, I want a white line down the middle. And I can hold shift down to make sure the line's straight. There's not going to be any code for the background. Now I need some sprites. I'm going to need a ball. And a paddle. And of course you can change the color of the paddle, but I'll just leave it like this to save us some time. The code for the paddle needs to tell it to turn this way. And then I want to move it all the way over to the left. That's going to be negative 227. We'll just go ahead and type in zero to put it in the middle. Whenever the game starts, we want it to go to the middle and point in the right direction. We'll call this one left paddle. We need the paddle to move up and down. Since this paddle's on the left, it's going to move up when I press W and down when I press S. You can put the code for it. When W is pressed, change Y by 10 and that works. And when S is pressed, change Y by negative 10. But there's a delay when you do that. It should work just fine, but for some reason it doesn't work really well when two people are playing. And so I'm not going to put it in the code when that key is pressed. I'm going to have it in a forever loop. So forever it's going to keep checking to see if the button is pressed. And if key W is pressed, we're going to move up by 10. And if S is pressed, we're going to move down by 10. Just works so much better. It's a lot smoother. It's not as jerky. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Now we're going to duplicate the left paddle to give us a right paddle. And we'll just put it the same place, but on the right-hand side. And it's going to go up and down when the up arrow and the down arrow is pressed. Works really well. Okay, for the ball. Let's just start off smaller. And forever we want it to move and bounce. When the game first starts, we want it to start in the middle at zero, zero, but we want it to change to not go just straight back and forth, change 90 to 95 to be off a little bit. There, now it's not just bouncing straight back and forth. 
We're going to need a couple variables to keep score. Left score and right score. And if it touches this left wall, then the right player should score a point. And if it touches this color and hits the right wall, then the left player should score a point. If touching the left color blue, then change the right score by one. So forever it's going to check and if it's touching that color blue right here, then right scores a point. Problem is it's looping through this so fast that it gets a couple of points every time it touches the wall. So we need to slow it down a little bit. So it'll give them a point and then it'll wait until it's not touching that color anymore. Copy that so that the left player can make some points and this color we're going to suck up some of this color on the right. And in the beginning of the game we need the score to go back to zero. Set left score to zero and set right score to zero. Now we just need the ball to bounce off the paddles. If the ball touches the left paddle, we'll change direction. To make it change directions, we'll tell it to go its current direction plus 170. And just like we did for the wait until not touching the blue wall, we need to make it wait until not touching the paddle or it'll keep changing directions. So if the ball hits the left paddle, it'll just change directions. I want to duplicate that so that it'll bounce off the right paddle. And we'll make it bounce just a little different. Instead of 170, we'll go with 190. And we can just change to the large readout. So we'll have the score at the top. And that's all the code you need for a regular game of Pong to play with two players. But let's make it even more fun. Let's add a new sprite and pick the star. Now I'm just adding some fun code to make the star twinkle and spin a little bit. When the program starts, the star is going to hide and go to a random position. We pick a random number for X and a random number for Y, somewhere near the middle. When the game first starts, he won't be there. We'll let the players play for just a few seconds and then it'll show up. And then forever, if he gets hit by the ball, he's going to move to another place. Now what this power up is going to do is make the ball go faster. So we're going to need a variable for the ball speed. So this is the star code, and if the star is touching the ball, he's going to go somewhere else, and we need to make the ball go faster. So we'll set speed, let's just make it 11, 
for a couple of seconds. Let's make it 12 for a couple of seconds and then we'll change the speed to 8. So we need to set the speed to 8 in the beginning. So that'll be our normal speed. And we need to make the ball go that fast. Right now the ball is moving 10 steps in this forever loop. He needs to be moving speed. All right, let's see if that power-up works. When we start playing, it's going at a speed of 8. And it definitely got faster there for a couple of seconds when we hit the star. I figured out a cheat that's kind of funny. You can put it in the code for the ball. Instead of pointing in the other direction whenever you hit the paddle, you can point towards the other paddle. So when the ball hits the left paddle, it'll point towards the right paddle. So no matter where the right paddle is, whenever the left paddle hits the ball, the ball's going to go towards the right paddle. That would be very sneaky to put that code in your program whenever you were playing your friends. Don't do that unless they have a really good sense of humor. I'm going to change that back. We don't need to be able to see speed anymore. Go to our variables and turn that off. Another thing that's fun that you never see in regular Pong is a lightning bolt flying out of the paddle and making you turn invisible. But since we're writing the code, we can do that. Okay, this lightning bolt's going to hide and turn sideways. He's got to point in the direction zero. Make him smaller. And for the left lightning bolt, if I press D, he's going to start off at the left paddle. Then he's going to show he's going to be visible. And then he's going to glide over to the right at the same Y position. So at the same Y position is going to make him just go straight across. And then he needs to hide again. And we'll make another one to go the other direction. We'll call them left lightning and right lightning. And he'll shoot when the left arrow is pressed. He starts at the right paddle and goes all the way to the left. Oh, but he's going backwards. Let's flip him around. He'll start pointing in the direction 180. And you can only shoot one at a time. Now when you get hit by a lightning bolt, you disappear. Your paddle disappears. So this is left paddle. If he's touching the right's lightning, he's going to hide for a couple of seconds or maybe just one second and then he'll show again. For the right paddle 
if he's ever touching left's lightning. Then he's going to hide and wait for a second and then show again. It works. So there's a few ideas I had about making Pong even more fun. If you think of some more power-ups, comment below and we'll figure out how to code it. Like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the next games and it'll make it easier for people to find them. This free coding lesson was provided by STEM in Games. Watch more lessons and keep practicing so you can create new worlds and games and make your ideas come to life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.